All right, welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're gonna to take a look at this image and this image. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the subject out of this image. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about color contamination. So when you're taking photographs against a backdrop, and a backdrop that has a color, whether this is just a seamless backdrop or a green screen, if your subject is close to the background, this color is gonna bleed over onto your subject because the light's gonna hit this, bounce off, and you're gonna get color contamination. You don't really see it too much right now, but you'll see this when I move this to sort of a almost black and white or a monochromatic background. I'm gonna show you how to kind of reduce it, but truthfully, the best way to fix this is to take a photograph so that you don't get color contamination. Then after we move the image over, I'm gonna show you how to create a smart object in Photoshop and explain what a smart object can benefit or do for you. And then I'm gonna show you how to clip one layer to another. Now the first thing that we need to do here is we'll just come over to our object selection tool this is an easy subject. We can probably just go ahead and click select subject. We don't actually need to draw around it because Photoshop's gonna be able to analyze this as we can see and easily pick this out. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move this over really quickly and I'll explain the move here in a second, but we're just gonna go ahead and move it over. And here now we can see that yellow around the edge of her body and it's in her hair as well is just contaminated this image. So this is that color contamination that I was talking about. We're gonna go ahead and delete this layer because that doesn't look good. We're gonna go in here and finish selecting this. So we'll come back up here, hit select and mask. We're gonna get those little bits of hair that we are missing here. So we're gonna grab the refine edge tool. You're gonna wanna come up here and make sure smart radius is selected. And my brush is kind of small and this is for just that top part of the hair. We're just gonna go ahead and brush, and this is gonna get any of those little frizzy hairs that we might be missing. Now right here, this is a large area, and this is a large area. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush bigger, and this is gonna give us a better selection. We're just gonna go ahead and paint over that area. Photoshop's gonna analyze it and select out that hair the best it can go. I'm not exactly worried about getting a perfect selection here. That's not the point of this video. Now we know that we have this color contamination down here in this image and that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and you'll notice we have this little box. It's called contaminate, decontaminate colors. So what this is trying to do is pick out the color that's contaminating this here. You can slide this slider so we can do 46% or 50% or 100%, it doesn't really matter. What this is allowing us to do is kind of help get rid of some of this color contamination. Now the issue is it's never gonna get it perfect. And we're gonna go, okay, that looks good. And we're gonna output this right here is a new layer with a mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and select it and put okay. Here's our new layer with our mask. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna move this image over here to our background. The way I'm gonna do this is simply just take this move tool. I'm going to click and hold. I'm gonna drag up to this layer drag back down to this layer, hold my shift key and let go. That's gonna center the image. So you can see we've already gotten it much better. The yellow is still there, but it's not anywhere as bad as it was originally. Now that looks pretty good. Now what I wanna do is I actually wanna size this image a little bit. What happens if I'm not sure if I wanna make this image large like this, or I wanna reduce it down smaller like this? If you take an image, a raster image like this, and you reduce it down really small, and then you apply it and you try to enlarge it back up, it is going to, when you make it small and apply it, it's actually physically gonna reduce the size of that image. And then when you try to enlarge it back up, it's gonna be all pixelated. So we're gonna go ahead and hit escape. And we're gonna do something and create a smart object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out here into this gray space, this layer, and I'm gonna right click. So right click, and it's gonna bring up a little panel, and it's gonna say convert to smart object. And you're gonna see this layer is now a smart object. This little symbol right here 
in the bottom right hand corner is telling you that this is a smart object layer. And so I would just call this smart object. So it's easy for us to recognize in this image. That's cool. So what this is going to allow me to do now is I can reduce this down really teeny tiny and apply it. Say, ah, it's too small. And then I can come back in here and I can make it bigger. And we don't affect the size. The cool thing about a smart object is it remembers the original object. It's transforming it, but it's not resizing it or doing anything to it. Whether we're resizing it or putting effects on a smart object, they're all gonna be non-destructive. And I'll show you how to do a non-destructive effect here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger. And that looks pretty good. So we'll make her a little bit bigger and we'll just place her right there. Now the issue with this is just the color. Now I could go in here and try to fix this color, but I'm gonna do something just a little bit different. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a black and white layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit black and white, but that made this whole image black and white. I don't wanna make everything black and white. I just wanna make our subject black and white. What we need to do is say, hey, black and white adjustment layer, I want you to just apply to the smart object, not the background. The way we do this is to clip. So what we're gonna do, and this is a little bit weird for people to get used to, is we're gonna hold the Alt Option button. And you'll notice when I go in between the smart object layer and the black and white layer, my cursor changes to this little square with an arrow pointed down. That means it's going to clip to the other. So all I have to do is click with my mouse and we get this little arrow down and now that has been clipped and it's saying, hey, I want you to clip to here. We can also come out to this gray area, right click and come over here to create clipping mask. You can come right click out here or you can option click in between to get that done. And that's just turn this layer black and white, but left our background color. Now this doesn't look good because the black and white looks so different from the background color. So what we're gonna do is something that we really haven't gone into. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna fill this layer. So I'm gonna come up here and go up down to fill. And I'm going to pick a color. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna pick this color right in here. I'm gonna say okay. And I'm gonna say, okay. Now we filled this with a solid color and this doesn't work because you can't see what else is below it and it's still there. So what we're gonna do is go into something called blending modes and we'll get into blending modes later, but we're just gonna drop down, go to color. So what this is telling Photoshop is we wanna use this color here. Now I could clip this. So if I wanna come in here and clip this, I can keep this color just on the subject, but it's giving us kind of a weird effect. So I actually wanna apply this solid color to the whole thing, just not her. We're just gonna undo that and that looks good. Now we have this like, and now we have this sort of nice monochromatic purple image. The last thing that we're gonna do here with this smart object is we're gonna add an effect to it. Now the cool thing about smart objects is you can add effects to them and they're non-destructive. When you're editing multiple images, and you need to apply effect to it, having an image as a smart object is gonna be good because you'll be able to see here in a second, you can turn that effect on and off. If this was not a smart object, it would not be non-destructive like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out here once again into this space and I'm going to double click. This is left click, not right click. So double click and it brings up our layer style. And what we're gonna do is go down here to drop shadow and we're gonna create a little drop shadow. So we'll just give it some distance. And over here, it's gonna be kind of showing you what it's doing. So I've got some spread and that looks pretty good. Everything looks good. And I'll come in here and I've created this little drop shadow off our subject. Now you'll be able to see this because right down here, it's showing we created an effect with the drop shadow. I can turn this off or back on, off or back on. Well, why? Because this is a smart object and it's allowing us to either enable this or disable this. Well, hopefully you learned something today. We went a little bit into 
decontamination of colors, how to create a clipping mask, and how to use a smart object inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.